So Arizona just recently banned trail cameras for all hunting use year round, if you haven't heard already. So what this law basically dictates is that game cameras, and they define game cameras as a camera that is motioned by, um, or has a motion sensor device. And so they basically define what a trail camera is or a game camera in the aid of taking wildlife. So you can't use these trail cameras to aid in the take of wildlife. You can use cameras for wildlife viewing and you can use cameras to protect personal property or have property surveillance or something like that. So I just want to touch on a few topics or uh, just a few parts of trail cameras and some of the issues that, that they tend to perpetuate in the hunting community and also uh, some pros and cons of this decision that Arizona has now made. Now, this is not something new. So New Mexico, Nevada, Utah all have pretty strict regulations on cameras. Some have banned cameras completely. Others have, like Nevada, they, they're not allowed to use cameras for about half the year. And then Utah. So this is something that's actually kind of trending right now is regulating trail camera use. And especially when we're talking about public ground. So I think this is where the issues become. You take public ground, national forest, or whatever, state ground, BLM, all that stuff. And then you take a bunch of private entities, which are people, hunters, you know, guides, whatever, and they put their personal property on state land, monitoring animals owned by the state or national forest or whatever, federal government. And it's really hard to regulate that. It's really hard to say... A, you can't do that, or B, you can only do it in certain areas, or what really comes into play is when people call the Game and Fish Department or call these various enforcement agencies and say, hey, somebody, so-and-so stole my camera, so, so-and-so uh, broke my camera, I keep getting my camera stolen, I have them on my camera, whatever it is. So you have the first part, which is drama. So cameras create a ton of drama all the time. People don't like seeing cameras on water holes. People don't like seeing cameras anywhere. And hunters that don't like cameras, they will go out of their way to destroy cameras. Now, I'm gonna just do a disclaimer right now is that I don't really use cameras as a hunter. I don't really use cameras as a guide or outfitter. I have sometimes, but I don't rely on them as like my sole source of locating wildlife. There are a lot of outfitters that do that. There are a lot of guides that do that. And there are also a lot of resident and non-resident hunters that do that. So that's when it becomes kind of a clash of motive, a clash of um, who's hunting. So you have guides and as we know, anything that has to do with a guide or outfitter automatically has a negative connotation to it. So you hear somebody say, well, all these guides have all these cameras up on these water holes. And, you know, these guides are, are stealing my cameras. But you also have the same amount of people putting their cameras up there, too, of just normal resident hunters or guides are just hardcore hunters. And I think a lot of drama is created because of that because number one if you see cameras in a certain area people automatically assume that their guides are outfitters sometimes they are labeled but most of the time a lot of cameras here's like a pro tip a lot of cameras are secretly labeled so they're not like outwardly labeled like hey this is um you know name an outfitter you know this is so and so outfitter guiding company on the camera because if that was the case then a lot of people would want to try to steal that camera try to see what's on it or they would put a camera on that in that same area thinking that maybe hey they're they're uh, they're on to something good here so what i mean by secretly marked is a lot of times they're just marked uh in in like small areas where like only the guide or outfitter that did it knows it's their camera so when it does get stolen and you have two cameras of the same kind or variety 
they'll check and say, hey, this is actually my camera. I just made a little mark or I have this little thing right here that I know that it's mine. So that's also a tip too, um, that if you do steal cameras, a lot of times they are secretly marked. Um, I don't really, like I said, I don't really care about cameras. Here's the main, the main thing with guides and outfitters is they use trail camera pictures to sell hunts. A lot of times, I'd say the majority of the time, the animals that are on those trail camera pictures are number one, not isolated to that particular guide outfitter or hunter. So in other words, a lot of people have the same pictures of that animal on their own camera as well. Number two, the majority of the time that animal is not taken by that specific hunter or outfit or whatever. It's just used as a marketing tool, which is a good way to market hunts. It's a good way to say, hey, look, this is what I'm looking at. I've got this, you know, 210 buck on this water, like up in the Arizona Strip where, where this is basically hotly contested the uh before i go any further it's basically the arizona strip the kaibab and the northern elk units unit 9 10 uh 8 all those units right there there's so much drama in that part of the state over trail cameras that that's really where the brunt of this legislation all the pressure has been coming up from for years this isn't something that just came out of nowhere this is something that's been talked about for years in the making because there is so much um you know d disruption and and uh drama and um just unnecessary calls to the game and fish department unnecessary unnecessary reporting and, and things like that so but let's get back to the main point is that pictures are used to locate wildlife that are traveling in certain areas or living in certain areas for that particular time for that season we also know that as soon as anything changes those animals leave if rut if the rut changes if the weather changes if they get hunting pressure if a lion comes in those animals do change locations you know just because somebody has a picture on some particular water that doesn't mean they have them literally tied to a tree for their client or for themselves as a hunter it simply indicates that that animal frequents this area, and it may be every single day, but it does indicate that they are in this area and you know what you're looking for. Okay, so that's that's basically how guides and outfitters use cameras. Yes, of course they use them to hunt, especially during archery season, especially during archery elk season, because th these elk are hitting water all day, and they pretty much have to hit water at some point in a 24 hour period. So for you to put clients on water that have been frequently hit, you know, you know, you're like, Hey, look, dude, or ma'am, this bull has been hitting this water every single day or every other day. You have to sit here. That is used quite a bit during elk season and at on the strip. Um, what the strip does too, is it, uh, and, and, there's lots of pictures, you know, where there's like 40 cameras in every water hole. There are a lot of cameras on the strip and there are a lot of cameras in the Kaibab and, you know, there can be 20 to 50 cameras on one water hole. Um, all for the same reason. It's all for identifying, hey, a big buck is using this water, you know, same kind of deal. So we get the idea. Pictures are used to locate wildlife and used to market to hunters for guides and used to, um, yeah, basically advertise a certain animal to a group of potential hunters that will lure them to potentially hunt with, you know, the outfitter guide. Um, another reason why they're used is they're used for people watching too. I mean, I, I know a lot of cameras are used in certain spots to specifically see who's going in there, see what, how many people are going through a certain road, see how many people are using the trail, see who's using what area. So we know the purpose of them. 
All of this is the same for residents too. So resident hunters or non-resident hunters, basically anybody that's not a guide who uses cameras quite a bit. I don't think, however, that normal hunters, residents and non-resident hunters have strings of hundreds of cameras like guides and outfitters do. I, I think there is a clear separation there from uh, guide usage or outfitter usage of cameras in the way that some guides do, which is literally hundreds of cameras versus uh, very similar to myself, like a guide or a normal hunter who like, I'll use them, I'll throw a couple cameras up a year for like a couple weeks, really dry, or I just want to see if something's coming into this water or, um, you know, just, just periodically, but I'm not running hundreds of cameras that I check daily to see if, you know, this is, uh, getting hit by a certain animal or whatever. So I do think there is a difference between guides and outfitters using cameras and, and resident hunters, just to be clear. I think that guides and outfitters do use them to take wildlife and are very effective at taking wildlife and more effective potentially at taking wildlife than just say your normal average hunter that throws a couple cameras up a year. All right. So let's talk about the doctrine. So what, what basically the ban of trail cameras, the, the foundation of it is, is, is they have stated that it goes against the fair chase doctrine stated by Boone and Crockett and, and most organizations, Boone and Crockett, Pope and Young, that aids in fair, or it, it uh, takes away from the fair chase element of hunting, which basically is, you know, gives an animal a fair shake. And if an animal is surveyed 24-7, 365, it takes away from that fair chase aspect of hunting. And I do agree with that. I, I agree that there are a lot of animals that would never have gotten killed if they weren't surveyed. 24 7 365 and i think the only way to do this the thing about it is it's all public land that that's that's where it becomes like an issue because you're like as a guide or outfitter or as a resident hunter you're like hey if you don't like me using trail cameras that's your problem what you could put a trail camera up in the exact same tree right next to me and you'll know exactly the same things that i know and so that's kind of where it becomes a little bit of a, an issue because it is all public. The, there's, you can say people take advantage of it. I think they're just using the, you know, the equipment they have, using the the motivation they have, because, you know, a lot of guys feel like, hey, I can put my camera anywhere. You're not going to touch it. You can put your camera. We're not going to touch it. And we'll all see the same stuff. And that is true. And then the line gets crossed when guys start messing with each other's cameras, start breaking each other's cameras. And then you start calling these enforcement agencies, these law agencies, whether it's Forest Land or BLM or, you know, Arizona Game of Fish, and then create a bunch of drama, which nobody really knows what to do with. Because technically speaking, if your private property is left on state land or federal land or national forest and each and, and wildlife refuge, each entity has a little bit different definition or requirements, but technically it becomes property of the state. It technically, as soon as you leave it for a certain amount of time defined individually by each organization, um, it actually becomes property of national forest, federal uh, Bureau of Land Management, um, and state and whatever it is, uh, national wildlife refuge. So it's this just giant gray area guys that like literally cameras create just a giant gray area because you take personal property, you put it on public land, but then you have commercial interests involved, i.e. guides and outfitters taking advantage of the public land, uh, trail cameras, putting hundreds and hundreds of them up, surveying wildlife 24, seven, 365 having an advantage over normal hunters and having an advantage over normal hunters in the take of, of wildlife. So these deer are now the fair chase aspect is compromised because they can't feed or water or do anything without them being on a camera. So honestly, in my overall opinion, I, I don't 
disagree with the fair chase aspect. I don't disagree with the whole ban of trail cameras. But it's the same thing. I guess I should say I don't disagree with, like I said, like the motivation is kind of leveling the playing field, so to speak. It, if you take away trail cameras, you do level the playing field for the animals and for normal hunters and guides. Okay, I agree with that. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But we know it's the same ideology that says we need to ban certain rifles. We need to ban assault rifles. We need to ban this. And you say, yeah, that's not really a bad idea. But then what happens is, is okay, now you're actually starting to infringe on rights as Second Amendment rights or as a hunter on public land. And the question becomes, where does it stop? So I think that's a huge motivation for people that not, not necessarily use cameras full time or don't have hundreds of cameras, but I think there's a lot of ideas out there and a lot of motivation for people to keep cameras to keep hunters right. So it's not like um, you necessarily want to keep cameras because you use them all the time, but you don't want to see this perpetuate into more and more regulations on hunters on public land who pay for the use of all this stuff. I mean, hunters pay for everything on public land. Um, all the, in any state, they pay for so much habitat. They pay for so much, uh, land use agreements between states and, and private entities and stuff like that. So I can see it both ways. Um, like I said, I don't have any vested interest per se. I don't have, I actually do probably have like 50 cameras, but like I said, I probably use like three or four a year for a total of about a month. Um, I just have that many just in the event that I was like, well, maybe I will eventually have need to put a bunch of cameras in a bunch of different spots. Just never got to that point. Um, but yeah, guys, that's just uh, my kind of reaction to it. I think there is pros and cons to it. I, I think that we need to really look at what Fair Chase is. And with as technology advances, that we need to pay attention to it. And be careful with how hunting is going. And obviously with commercializing the take of wildlife, which is a guide outfitter like myself, who make a living from taking wildlife. And I don't necessarily agree with that because I make my living by having hunt fun hunting experiences, which not always result in the successful take of a wildlife. I, we like to have fun hunting. We have a good time at hunting camp and, and we do something that we are very privileged to do. And if we are fortunate enough to take a, a deer or a buck or a, a bull or, a, you know, anything like that, then that's even more of a cause for celebration, but we're kind of already having fun hunting no matter what. So, um, I kind of have a different mindset. Um, it's not all about, uh, you know, the size, the antlers, the inches and that kind of stuff. So, but it is something to be aware of. I mean, I, I don't want to see regulation keep going in this direction, limiting hunters because it doesn't just take away from guides. It also hurts a lot of resident hunters that there's a lot of guys that just have a couple cameras, but they have them in their spots every single year. And they just, they keep track of their little hunting spots, you know, and it hurts them too. It, it hurts them a lot. It hurts their ability to be successful. And, you know, maybe they don't have time to go scouting for three months a year, like some people do, you know? So it's kind of one of those situations where, um, we just got to be careful. We got to be careful what we support. Um, I think that they can do something with the law that's not like a total ban. That's not a, you know, just total annihilation of all trail cameras used by anybody, which in the law it does state wildlife viewing is okay. And now we step into an more and more gray area where I'm sure there's going to be hunters and guides that say, Hey, I'm just viewing wildlife. We're, we have no intention of shooting this. I just have my camera up to look. So that's, 
another segment I'm sure that's going to be addressed in the future by, um, you know, law enforcement agencies regarding the take of wildlife using cameras. So anyway, guys, I just want to give you my opinion, my reaction to it all. Um, I think there's good things. I think there's bad things. And I think we just need to be careful and be educated on every decision that we make. So, all right, until next time, got some more videos coming out soon. Uh, Arizona draw just came out. So I'm excited. Going to get some deer hunts, uh, in the, in the books here and, and get rolling, get ready for the fall. So take care guys. We'll talk to you later.